Dr. Christy McCrackus is professor in the School of History, Technology, and Society at Georgia Institute of Technology, where she teaches courses in the history of science, Nazi Germany, and the history of espionage. Prior to Georgia Tech, she was a professor at Michigan State University, a Chancellor Scholar at the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation, and a lecturer at Harvard University. Dr. McCrackus has written numerous books, including her most recent publication, Prisoners, Lovers, and Spies, The Story of Invisible Inks. Her other books are Surviving the Swastika, Scientific Research in Nazi Germany, Science Under Socialism, East Germany in Comparative Perspective, East German Foreign Intelligence, and Seduced by Secrets, Inside the Stasi Spy Tech World. In addition, she is author of over 30 articles. Her awards include fellowships from the Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton, Fulbright, as well as grants from the National Science Foundation and the Humboldt Foundation. Dr. McCrackus received her bachelor's in history from Oberlin College and her master's and PhD in the history of science from Harvard. Please welcome Dr. Christy McCrackus, who will be speaking on secret writing and the world of international uh, intrigue. Hello. Thanks so much for the lovely invitation to this st distinguished group of international travelers. Um, so I hope today to take you on a little tour, an international tour of history, starting with the ancient Greeks all the way up to the present. Um, what I'd like to do is to start off a little, I get a lot of questions about how I got interested in this topic, uh, the topic of secret writing. And so I thought I would tell you a little bit about um, the background to the book. So as Nancy mentioned, one of my previous books was called Seduced by Secrets Inside the Stasi Spy Tech World. And when I was researching that book, I had one chapter on uh, the Stasi, the East German Ministry for State Security, uh, secret writing. But I had a really hard time finding anything on this material because it's super secret. No one wants you to find this material. So I went to Berlin um, and uh, was sitting in the archive and they gave me a pile of files and of course you get very tired when you see a pile of files and dust is flying in your face and you think, why am I not finding what I'm looking for? I want those secrets, the secrets of secret writing. And then I was nonchalantly turning the files and I came across this thin file and as a seasoned historian, actually sometimes those are the most interesting ones. And I opened it up, and my mouth dropped open. I thought, wow, this is exactly what I was looking for. It's, it was stamped top secret. <laughs> and it was a secret formula uh, from the 1970s by the East German uh, Secret Police and Intelligence Agency, uh, the Stasi, and its Foreign Intelligence Department. So I was super excited. And my heart started racing, um, and, and, and I was getting hot. And I felt like a kid who to stole a candy bar, because I thought, you know, I'm not supposed to be seeing this. Spy agencies never want you to see their sources and methods. And this was a key method throughout the Cold War. Um, well, you might say, well, the Stasi didn't exist anymore. That's why we could look at their files. However, they didn't want us to look at a lot of things because um, intelligence professionals knew that people not only share material, but they often use the same sorts of methods. And this turned out to be true. So um, at the same time, so I, I had this file and I thought, well, they must have made a mistake. You know, maybe it was a bureaucratic lapse and, you know, they're not going to give it to me. They're not going to, you know, I put in an order to get it copied. And just in case I, I copied the whole file out by hand, it took a, you know, a couple hours to do this and because I thought I might not get it and, you know, I wanted to burn it into my brain. Um, and then at the end of the day, you know, the guy hands me a copy. <laughs> so, you know, of course, I wasted the whole afternoon, but maybe I learned the material better that way by copying it out. So, um, 
And then I raced, it was in, it, the archive was in a building with wooden steps, you know, that kind of echoed when you walked down them. And so I raced down the steps with my sandals and I could hear the echo and I thought, you know, maybe they're coming back to get the file. And, <laughs> but I raced outside and mission accomplished, I had the file. So that's the, 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 the short version of the story. Um, so that kind of, you know, that was in a chapter in that book, but then, um, it really, the reason I got interested in actually writing a whole book on secret writing, which of course isn't limited to the Cold War, it's not limited to the Stasi, it's not limited to the CIA, was that I, so I was teaching a class on espionage and technology, and you know, I had to give a lecture on secret writing. And so I went to the library the night before, not a good idea, uh, you know, and there was nothing on the topic, um, so that's especially bad idea when you wait to the last minute to prepare your lecture. Um, and so I ended up, you know, doing sort of a, you know, lemon juice and candle exercise and improvise and told them some stories and that was the end of the 50 minutes, thank goodness. Um, and then I thought, well, geez, why isn't there anything written about this topic? Um, and uh, uh, so I'm going to jump ahead here. Um, so there's a book called The Code Book on cryptography, the study of codes and ciphers, uh, but there was nothing on invisible ink or secret writing. And I'm going to define our terms a little bit because there's sometimes confusion about cryptography, codes and ciphers, and secret writing. They're not the same thing. They're different. So because oftentimes people would say, oh, you're, oh, a book on secret writing. Cool. I love codes and ciphers. Nope. It's not about codes and ciphers. So I'm going to use this return button, go back to an earlier slide. Um, uh, so, that, so then I decide, well, there isn't a book. It seems pretty important. I'll write a book. It wasn't actually that easy because, um, you know, aside from the fact there must be reams of uh, the history written in invisible ink that I haven't been able to read. Um, so, you know, I always wonder what I've missed because it was so successful a historian hasn't dug it out. But I was pretty amazed what I did find. Um, and it was really intriguing researching and it was lots of fun for me especially because my previous books were on modern 20th century Nazi Germany, which is a dark topic and the Stasi, another dark topic. And I had a blast because I could go way back to ancient Greece and the light of the Mediterranean and, and, and finding out what the ancient Greeks knew about secret writing. But of course, I wanted to figure out also as a historian, I just couldn't write a bunch of stories and weave it together. That's not a book quite yet. Uh, so you know, I thought, well, how important is Invisible Ink? I mean, if there hasn't been a book yet, if people associate it with child spray, lemon juice and candles, like how important was it? Um, and I found out actually it was very important. And the fact that it was important was that spy agencies in the 20th century didn't want you to see the files. Um, but in addition to the Stasi files, the British, the MI5, uh, sort of equivalent to our FBI, had declassified a lot of material from the both world wars. And it was just fascinating. It was filled with secret ink and secret writing. Um, and so what I decided to do as I uh, designed this book was um, don't let my title and, you know, the publisher that it's a university press scare you off. It's a popular book. So what I tried to do was tell you the story of secret writing from ancient times to modern times, from ancient Rome to NSA surveillance using stories. So today I'll only be able to tell you a few stories, but the book is just chock full of stories about how people used it. And I decided that was the, the, the most fun and engaging way to present the story. Um, and so that's the way the book is, is set up. Today, I'm just going to give you some highlights through pictures. And I should warn you, I'm going to race through the first 300 years, well, actually more than that, because I want to get to when it really actually, things really start taking off and happening during World War I. Um, so I promised that I'd tell you a little bit about definitions. I've got a handout for you. Um, and I'll show you the handout right here. So there's a big word there called steganography. Uh, don't be scared away by that. And I only use it a couple of times in the book. But it's kind of the companion to the word cryptography. And you probably all know cryptography is about codes and ciphers. Well, steganography is about hidden writing. And the root is from the Greek stegos, which is hidden. It's like when you think of the dinosaur, stegosaurus has spikes on it, so it's hiding something underneath. But uh, the, the, 
SW is, hasn't gone the way of the dinosaur yet. Um, so that's by way of de definition. So I'll go back to a few slides. Um, so as a historian, some of the questions I ask, well, it 